you never finish your paintings? No. Why? Because I, you know, here I put them here in my where I live, and I, I, I criticize them. I, I, I look at them for some years, and most of them don't have the quality I have in my mind. Uh, so sometimes you are disappointed by yourself? Permanently. Uh, how can you live with that? I can. I can. I know that when I start the painting, it's, al it's already his annihilation. And what about what about being spontaneous? For example, when Le Panthéon asks you to paint something for them, how do you manage? No, but this, then I go back to my, to what I have done already, you know? When, when I do now the show in the Panthéon for, for, for Paul Celan, this is then, I compose then paintings, you know? I cut them or I glue them together. I, I re, re, uh, assemble. I, I reassemble them, yes. I do always, I do this. And so, what was in your mind when uh, they asked you to work again in Paris for Le Grand Palais Ephemer? You know, I, I worked since, I can say, 60 years about porcelain, Ingeborg Bachmann porcelain. And, um, and during the COVID, I could concentrate more on these paintings because I was alone, no visits, no telephone. So, and then I had, I had some paintings I thought I could show them. And then they offered me the, the compare and said yes. Mm, but before you were working, you have done an uh, incredibly good series for that was shown at Gagosian and also Ah, you mean the painting? There was some, one or two paintings also for Porcelain, you know? Halme, oh Halme, ja Halme der Nacht, aus Herzen und Hirnen sprießen die Halme der Nacht. Ein Wort aus Sensen gesprochen neigt sie ins Leben. So this, this, this poem was there, mm. in this gallery. So obviously the next question is, why Porcelain? Ah, because uh, this is for me, together with Ingeborg Bachmann, the most important poet of the second half of the 20th century. It's, it, it's, it's, it's the important. most, um, the most, um, the most, with most of, of preci precision, 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 oui. and secret at the same time, you know, secret and precision. Wow. Yeah. And is it important in this period to read Paul Celan? What, what, my, what do you mean, which period? 2021, uh, um, a pandemic period. A pandemic, oh yeah. Iso isolation, isolation, everyone is scared, vaccine or not vaccine. Wow, it's very, we, we live in an, histo in an historical period. I mean, I mean, it's more than the pandemic. Is when you see the world, the world situation, it's very dangerous now. You know. So in the in the far east, um, no, in the in the Proche, Proche Orient. Where? And Middle East. Yeah, Middle East, and <clears throat> there is and and uh, and also in Europe, in certain countries comes up old moras. You know, Moras, do you understand Moras? No, what is Moras? Uh, Manuela, Moras. Mm. Wo, wo, when you have the field and it's, it's mud. Mud, mud. Uh, you know? Okay. And sometimes it's blue, blue, and the old things come up, you know? You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. So, yes, but uh, so why Paul Celan in this period? Because it's, it's, the, best, uh, it's the best poet. <laughs> it's clear. And we need poetry? Absolutely. You know, for me, poetry, poems, are the only real things. All what you see around you, even you, is an illusion. It's not real for me. Only a poem is, has a reality. So what is reality? A poem. Yeah. yeah. So 
Do you know a poem uh, of Paul Celan, but not in German, in English or in French? In French, no, I know it in German, yes. Okay, just two sentences in, in, in German. Ah. Um, als Arche verließ es die Straße, so wart du gerettet ins Unheil. Oder another one is... Um, ich stelle die Aschenblume in das Glas voll reifer Schwärze. Um, Schwestermund, dein Wort lebt fort vom Fenster und was ich träumt, klettert an ihm empor. So it's for the heaven, my mind. I had once, I had a lot of poems in my head. Now, now I lose them more and more with the age, you know. And so what do you do with a poem in your mind? Huh? What do you do with a poem in your mind? Oh, it, it comes. During the day it comes to my conscious, you know, and I think on it. Or when I paint, you know, when I paint, there's always this, I'm full of, the, of poems, you know, of, of Rilke, of Drakel, of uh, Goethe, all, 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 all the poets. And then <coughs> sentences comes in, comes in my head, you know, all like this. And you told me last time that every morning you read? Uh, sure, sure. I, I, I go in my library in the morning to start with. And uh, what did you read this morning? I had, I think I had Sioran. Sioran, you know Sioran? Yes. I like him very much. Mm. So again, why Ceylon now in Paris? I know, it's, it's, it's obvious. He lived in Paris. Oh, he's um, from, from 46. To, to his death, he lived in Paris. He lived in Paris and worked in Paris. Sometimes he traveled a little bit, but not too much. And um, I think, uh, and he was married with a French woman, an oh. artist, the artist is French. Beautiful name. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, but so, <coughs> what do you think people, do you think people will understand Sioran looking at your paintings? Sure, because it's 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 a po poet who turns turns all upside down, you know, and, and who has no who has no illusions, you know. He is he is he is a he is a real poet, you see, all right. Yes. And so, I was wondering, words versus painting. How do you manage with that? Words versus painting? Yeah. Oh, it's not versus. It's not versus for me. Um, you know, since since I'm I'm paint, I, I write into my my paintings, and then it's 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 inside. You know, it's it's part of the painting. But you told me that uh, once when you were young, you were thinking about becoming a writer, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I had. Uh, I was successful when I was 17. I got the Prix Jean Walter. You don't know what it is, no? No. It's a French prize. I think it's it stopped. This foundation stopped, I think. So it was a. Uh, uh, I could got some money, I could travel, and I had to write a journal. And for this journal, I got the first prize, and, uh, and then later, uh, the. Um, the French. the German critic. Um, um, Walter Jens, you don't know him, but he was in those times the Pope of the critics mm -hmm. in, in Germany, and he said, "Oh, the next, the next book, I think I can give it to the Pieper, Pieper Verlag, you know, Pieper, Pieper, you know." Yeah, you? okay. And and this was a success, you know, in '17. Then you you think, what I should do, you know? And you didn't keep on. I I, I kept on writing, but not publishing. for publishing. So, but why to choose the paintings? I was about to say images, but it's more than images. What do you mean to choose? Why have you chosen to paint instead of writing? Because always you refer to writing. So long. Yeah, sure, sure. It was always challenging. Challenge? No, what is this? When the wagon was once like this and once like this, you know? Yeah. Um, um, This I don't know. It happened, you know? Yeah. It happened. 
But uh, why to put words in your paintings? Because they are me. They are me, these words. They, they are, they are um, sediments in me. So, so I can... It's, it's normal, you know? It's, it's like... Um, it's quotidian life for me, you know? And, uh, yeah. But it means that uh, the forms you are, the forms, the material of the painting are not in us. You need words also. It's not a question of need. It's not a question of need. It's a question of uh, what happens. It happens that the words are as much in me as the color is in my hand, you know. And wh what is your project in Venice? What are you going to do in Venice? In Venice, I will do uh, the big uh, sala. Um, what is this called? Huh? Sala de los Cunene in the Palazzo Ducal. I will paint all the all the all the, um, the, sa the la salle, all the rooms. The, the room? Yeah, all around. So this is a, a crazy project. For, for me, it's not crazy. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a defi. What is it, a defi? A challenge. It's a challenge, yes. So what will it be about? You know, it's a big challenge because they asked interactor, you know, my favorite painter. So... <laughs> so, uh, uh, Tintoretto, you are in competition with Tintoretto there? I'm always in competition with all the balls before, it's clear. And I saw a portrait, a self-portrait of Van Gogh that you did. Oh, this I did when I was old. I was perhaps 14 years or so. And why, why do you have it here? I had it here, ah yeah. I had a year ago or so, or two years ago, I had to give a lesson, lesson in the Tate about Van Gogh. They, they asked me if I would do this. They knew that, I, that I, I know about Van Gogh. And then I put it there because they came and asked me and I said, oh, I was 14 years old. And I saw some uh, documentation around about Moog. I am Moog is my favorite painter, actually. More than Van Gogh? No, I, I don't, you know, I don't do a list. Yeah, uh, what is called this list? Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Uh, this, um, there, there is a, there is a... The top 10 or...? There is a word for that, in the sport and so... Uh, what is this called? A list? Ranking. Ranking list. I don't do ranking this. Of course. <laughs> but why Munk is important for you? <clears throat> because he he gave to the landscape a human a human um, appearance, you know? So the when you see his paintings the, the, the human beings, the heads of the of the all the corpse are are in a in a unseparable way connected with the landscape, you know. It's wonderful how he he um, he um, tells us through the landscape what happens in the human beings. Mm. You have to do a show there. Now there's a new Munch Museum. I was there like one month ago. I I was I think last year or two years ago. I saw all the depot. Ah. They have a lot there. Yeah, a lot. It's huge. And uh, how do you begin? They are made a ranking list for them. <laughs> <laughs> I think they will not follow it. <laughs> and, uh, do you remember? I, I said this, 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 not so. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you begin a, a painting? Oh, I have first an idea, a concept. So I do a painting when I have a shop, you know? Something is beautiful, a landscape or... or a item, woman. For example. Also, yes, I don't forget this. Yes, I should have chosen it first and then the other things. Or, or a poem or, 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 or a situation. And uh, then I start, I have a conception, but it never goes through the conception. I, 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 I change it all the time. So it's, it's always a fluxus, you know, fluxus? Yes. Fluxus, and it goes on and on and on. And That's why you have a diary. Yeah. Um, the diary helps also uh, to, to solve 
problems in the in the in the pittura, in, in the in the white painting because mm. it's another the language can help too. And when we come here, we are amazed by the fact that everything is so big. The library, the space, the work. Could this you do something small? Sure. I, perhaps you saw the other books I did. I did a lot of books. Uni but they are heavy. They are still big in a way. I can show you small books like this. Really? Yes, yeah, sure. Or I do watercolors. I had a show two or three years ago in, in New York just with watercolors and books. But people don't, they say, they always write big, big, but, and it's not big for me, no, it's not. Oh, that's it's interesting. A, it's a, just a question of, of temperament, you know. It doesn't mean that a big painting is, is <coughs> monumental, you know, it's not. You, you have paintings, for example, from the Kooning, from the 50s, from the, the so-called Havana paintings, you know them? No. You have to look. Okay. They are monumental, but they are 150 by 150. You know, they are small. It's, it's not a question about monu monumental or so. I think it's just a question about temperament. I, I like to dance, you know, in front of the painting. Exactly. Painting. You said you dance. I would, yeah, love, sure. I would love you to see dancing. Uh, perhaps once later, yes. <laughs> And uh, so, when I interviewed you last time, you said you would tell me about your next dream. My next dream? Yeah, what is your dream now? What do you dream about? You mean consciously or at night? As you like. Oh. I... No, it's a... Uh, it doesn't stop the dream. I always dream, but I will never arrive it to have the the painting. I dream. You dream of paintings? No, I dream of the painting, the last, the the best painting. You know the chef d'oeuvre. Oui. But I dream, but I never will never get it. Wow. Yeah. And my last question is about the situation because I know you are very interested in geostrategy and politics. In so what strategy? Geostrategy. Geostrategy. Yes. And so, what's your feeling about what's going on now? Oh, I'm I'm very um, um, inquiet. What is this? Worrying. I'm I'm worrying because, you know, um, I did once. I was in China in 10 years ago and made a big travel on the side road, you know, but on the, on the, on the uh, south side road, it was not open. Mm -hmm. I had to give some bakshish to... <laughs> and so, and now the new uh, president, he, he, he thinks of the new side, ro side road. And this and Europe is not really unified, you know, it's, it's, it's a big problem, Europe. So, why Paul Ceylon for Le Grand Palais Ephemere? Hello. In English. It's a cycle, you know. I, um, I, <clears throat> I had already shows dedicated to Paul Ceylon, I don't know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Then, when I did uh, Le Grand Palais, there was there are the quotations in too, or the show that did in Bourget, you know, last year. Uh, there was Celan in too. So it's it's it's. I I didn't do just this show for Paul Celan. It's always there, and wherever I go, he is with me. So it's a cycle. Yeah, you can you can say it's a. It's a permanent cycle. You can say it's a spiral, you know? Then a cycle to go up like this. But beginning with Monumenta? Uh, no, no, no. I, I did works for Paul Z. You know, in the 80s, I did a lot of paintings. It's called, there was called the Blondes Haar Margarete del Aschenes Haar Sulamit. And there was a, another cycle of paintings. So this started already in the 70s, you know? Oh. In the 70s, and 
And my first rencontre with Celan was when I was 60 years ago, when I was 60 in school. Ah, so, you remember precisely? I, I, I remember the day <coughs> when we read in the school the Todesfuge from Paul Celan. Uh -huh. And I was very, very impressed. And um, I didn't, in those times, I didn't know about the Holocaust, you know, because they didn't tell in Germany. In my family, they never told about this. And, um, but I was, and, and this Todesfuge is about the Holocaust, you know. But I was very impressed, not knowing yet, not the Holocaust, but I was impressed by the paintings. And I was, I was feeling that there was something big, monstrous, horrible behind, you know. I was feeling that. And in what city was it? It was in Rastatt. <laughs> you don't know Rastatt? No, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> there I was going to the, to the, to the lycée, to the, to the high school. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And if Europe doesn't get solidified, unified, then we get Scratch. squeezed between, yes. between the Chinese and the Americans. So I, I, I see this with some worry. worry. Yeah. But uh, you, in, your, in your painting, you speak above all about the past, right? But not about the present. In my paintings? Yes. It is the present, because I made it in the present. You know, so the past is the present? You know, the past, the, the present doesn't exist really. Because when we want to keep it, it's already gone, you know. So it's, it's, a, it's a past and the future who are connected, you know. I connect the past and the future. Yeah. Because all what we can do as artists, as writers, comes back what we, what we remember from our childhood. What about, why is Holocaust important today? <laughs> if we speak about Paul Celan. No, it's, it's always imminent, you know? I think it can happen again. That's my thing. Because, you know, it, <clears throat> you know in Germany there was the so-called Stunde Null, uh, time zero, no, hour zero. Okay. Because they said 45, it was all finished, and we, we re rebuilt the country, and now it's fine. But I never, I, I always said, it's still there, you know? It's all is still there, covered, you know, with a uh, with, uh, with, um, couverture. A blanket? Covered with a blanket of, of democracy, but it's still very dangerous. You know? and, and we see now in different countries, also in Germany, how, how this, these disgusting things blow up again. And uh, to, to live in France is, uh, is better? Oh, you have some un unpleasant things too here. <laughs> Everywhere, no? Yeah, and it, it gets more and more virulent, you know, violent, because the Holocaust is, is for some of them far away, you know. For me, it's not far away, but... Oh, for sure. But uh, the people who, who, who suffer there, they, they die, and... Uh, and so it, it's a common point with Paul Celan to live in France too. It's a what? Common point, point commun, to live in France like Paul Celan. I don't want to compare me with Paul Celan. That's, that's more and more complicated. Um, <clears throat> but um, it's true that I still think in German language, you know? When I write a letter or I do a, prepare, um, a lesson, a lesson. I do it always in German, you know, never in France or in English. So I'm in this country with the German language. Merci, monsieur. Okay.